Okay, mm-hmm. great. And then uh, another interesting peptide is dihexa. It's one of the few mm-hmm. that actually is taken orally. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's widely available. So, um, you know, people talk about the, was it 10 million times, produ- help you produce 10 million times more brain-derived neurotropic factor. Um, well, that sounds great, but in <laughs> practice, does that actually promote that much benefit? Um, so, so I, I, yes. And, and, uh, so yeah, 10 million times the potency of BDNF, um, it is mimicking angiotensin four, which we've known is a great, uh, sort of nootropic product for a long, long time. Um, and some of the results that I've seen with dihexa have been extraordinary. Mm. Um, one of my favorite, uh, things, if you're, if you're listening to this right now, um, I would recommend pausing it for a, a few seconds going to Vimeo as a platform and searching Dr. Joseph Harding, um, uh, Dihexa. Um, and I recommend looking at it because uh, there's a certain part of that video, which is uh, astounding. It's really one of the first times I came across Dihexa. Um, and what they actually are doing is they're inducing Parkinson's in mice. Um, and so they have a, a three mice here. They have one mouse that's normal. They have one mouse who Parkinson's has been induced upon. Um, And then they have a mouse that had Parkinson's induced, but has been treated with dihexa. And one of the ways that they test this is they uh, encourage the mice to hang from a rope. So they put their front two paws on a rope, almost like you're doing a pull up. Um, And then they just wait and see how long you can stay up. Um, And uh, it's extraordinary to see because as you would imagine, the Parkinson's uh, um, uh, mouse drops very, very quickly. Um, it's only really got one arm that they can do it, and then it, it sort of drops off. Um, then you have the dihexa treated mouse and then the normal mouse. And uh, the normal mouse actually drops second, but by a wide margin. Uh, the the dihexa treated mouse probably stays on that line um, twice as long as even the normal mouse. That's and incredible. it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible to see. And even before that, you can see some amazing pictures of, of the, the neuron growth with, with dihexa and some of these animals. And it is astounding how powerful it is. Um, and so uh, in, in a lot of times, brain diseases are very hard to treat. Yeah. Um, a lot of times because they don't have a lot of, uh, you know, the blood brain barrier, having targeted approaches um, in just the nature of these conditions are sometimes very difficult. So sometimes a heavy handed tool like the dihexa um, can be really good. But other times I can see that you probably wouldn't want that as much stimulation there, especially for things that are more of just nootropic based um, uh, benefits. Hmm. So for what conditions would you, I mean, Parkinson's, that, that sounds like that would be very appropriate. I've heard doctors who treat kids with autism, um, mm-hmm. they, they give them dihexa. So what yeah. kind of conditions have you seen people using it for? Yeah, I've seen people use it for the broad spectrum, everything from those TBIs and strokes we talked about to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's to even just trying to maintain cognitive function with age. Um, so I've seen people use it in a, in a variety of circumstances. I think probably the people who are, who are generally the most positive about it are the people who have the most serious conditions. Mm-hmm. And uh, have you heard of great results from practitioners? Uh, I have, but, but I would say that sometimes it's a little mixed um, in terms of uh, uh, the the responses. Some people might not experience anything. Other people will say it's life changing. And so um, I really think that uh, you know maybe we're not sure maybe the best indications yet. But I know that we we it's certainly a strong nootropic uh, and and uh, powerful brain product. Yeah. So the the PL dihexa goes across the blood brain barrier. That's no problem. Very easy, I assume. Correct. And it was made that way. Um, and, and like I said, to mimic angiotensin 4, but to be orally bioavailable and to get across the brain.